Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left hand corner we got Suko starting as the blue Protoss. Bottom left hand corner we got Tartman starting as the red Zerg. This is winner's bracket round two, so we're going to be starting off on Citadel, a big map. And I am really, really excited to see both these guys. Uh, for those who do not know, I know, knew of Tartman and was in the same community as Tartman for uh, basically prior to even StarCraft. He was part of a, a couple communities actually. One was Joe.2. Which, if you ever see someone with a .j2 out there in kind of a bygone era, of uh, usually first-person shooters, uh, there's that. There's also a split-off little channel called Ikaruga on IRC that I don't even know if it's active anymore. But using both of those, and I had a lot of fun with both those guys, with everybody in that group. So I got a special place in my heart for him. He's going up against Sugo, who I feel like Sugo gets slept on a lot, and he's one of the guys that. I feel like I didn't say it enough uh, when he was at the tournament when he's active. I do think Sugo is one of those guys that actually could win the entire thing. He He's really talented and a lot of people underestimate him, I think. And he is a kind of, he's a top tier Protoss, but he goes a little bit under the radar. And I don't know if that's by choice or if that's just, uh, what do I want to say, by accident or by choice. But he's a dangerous, dangerous player. I definitely think he is the heavy favorite here versus Tartmon. But Tartmon's shown some good stuff overall thus far. In the meantime, Tartmon is going to go ahead. He's going to go for an over pull here to start to play a little bit safe. I've noticed that Zerg have kind of trended lately in the meta towards this. I think because the gateway openers have been very, very powerful as of late. In the meantime, Sugo going upper right. I'm not sure I like it as much on this map in particular because it is a much, much larger map. Tartmon going to go ahead and scout out towards the right-hand corner with his initial drone. So I, I think that is going to lead to a dedication of at least four Zerglings to start because this drone going out on the map and oh, well, never mind. Is he just going to pocket it early? He's going to pocket it early at the net. I, I thought he was going to go ahead and scout with it, but instead he's already got it in position. Going to lose a little bit of mining time, but might be able to avoid potential probe harassment. That might have been the reasoning behind it, but a very, very rapid drone which definitely suggests we're going to see two hatch or sorry, three hatch before gas. As far as response, first results queued up. Tartman, Tartman sees it. Looks like he does have six Zerglings queued up. And let's see if he's got. He's just with the timing where nice little dodge there by Sugo. And part of the problem, but we have the trailing two Zerglings that might be dedicated to this probe otherwise. So Tartman holding right this second. The Zealot holding on the corner of vision here. I think he wants to see whether the Zerglings were going to stay with the probe or not. And now that the Zergling's moving out of vision briefly, Sugo pulling back and a nice play by Tarpman right there to throw a little bit of confusion Sugo's way to draw that probe back to wipe it out. So Sugo, again, moving just outside of Overlord vision to try to provoke additional Zergling production. It looks like he did manage to force a queue of at least another two Zerglings, which is going to slow down the economy of Tartman a bit. But Tartman is going to have a lot of larva. And in the meantime, Sugo was able to... So this is a big bit. Here, Tartman moving another old lord in position. I, 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 I'm going to say it. I kind of don't like this. I've seen a lot of guys do this. And part of the reason I don't like this is if your opponent gets the drop on you and then missing the probe right there is, is if they get the drop on you with the Corsair timing, which is highly likely considering how late this gas is, uh, it does give the opportunity for your Protoss opponent potentially, potentially, to get uh, two Overlord kills rather than one, which can uh, be a big impact mid-game. But what it does provide in the meantime is good vision versus all this. Look at Sugo. Uh, this is an unbuildable gap, so that might have also been a consideration for Tartman in, in building the additional Zerglings, noting that it was a little bit harder to defend the front. We already have fives, and that actually might make sense for more gateway first builds as well. Six o'clock location has been discovered. That probe going to go ahead and damage it. Doesn't look like any Zerglings are going to peel off right this second. I wonder if there's going to be a drone battle right there. But we're going to have a tech delayer immediately here bottom left. So I think this is going to be four hatch play transition. This it felt like a later assimilator than usual. So we'll see what happens with these initial two overlords, but we're going to try to keep an eye on that. I think it was a larger zealot. Um, I think there were more zealots fielded here early. Forge and a cannon up, by the way, as well. Oh, and this is huge. So Sugo also able to detect the six o'clock. He's going to be able to move in and also get a look at that lair. Uh, and that will let him know that he's very likely going to need, first of all, Corsair, but also some defensive cannons that might make him a little bit... That actually might have been part of a consideration for Tartman as well, moving the two overlords forward, knowing that he was going to, in fact, go for a little bit more aggressive air. So once the, the better 
coverage to spot the zealots potentially. And usually, the, what's nice about Mules versus Zealot is, is you, you know, you get the free damage on the Zealots that can't attack back. But it does open up things like this, where Sugo trying to push for kind of the anti timing, force out a lot more Zerglings before you have the higher tier tech units, and kind of stymie Tartman's economy as a result. Maybe intercept but a nice little surround here from tartman i'm not sure if he's got the sufficient amount of zerglings in but beautiful micro from sugo as well and you can see sugo able to pres uh, preserve at least two zealots and a probe in the midst of this and he's going to shove his way here in the six o'clock there's only a single drone working but if the zealots turn around and make an inverse defensive wall this could be a lot of trouble from tartman but nice little mic little bit of micro there from tartman a nice disruption of the drone as well pulling off the line loses the drone but is at least able to clear out a good amount of the zealots in the meantime spire is still away finishing Sugo getting great value out of this because this is forcing out even more zerglings the zerglings making their way across and that's going to be fewer drones this is usually where you want to be like we're 25 drones somewhere around there and instead he's having uh, although as long as a uh, tartman should pause right here on the zergling production just wait for the mutalists don't even dedicate the zerglings move these zerglings out to the front and just let the mutalists clean up that zealot here at the six o'clock location overlord starting to make its way back it looks like he is still going to dedicate his zerglings i'm not sure i like that i think he should have just waited for the spire timing let the zealot sit there and just uh make sure you're mining opposite corner but cleared that out does have the fourth hatchery dropping uh, has now managed to get a healthier work account, but that Corsair, uh, I missed the Corsair killing that first Overlord. So that Overlord's in the red. This Overlord's feeling, uh, uh, fleeing, and Sugo did have an opportunity, if he was going to go for it, to try to go for a second Overlord, but it looks like he's going to play a little bit more passively, a little bit more defensively, and make his way back. In the meantime, Photon Cannon, he is stacking a couple Corsair in the background just to uh, be safe. Zelt, leg speed, second gateway uh, in the midst of this. That's going to be three gateways total. And I think this, uh, we'll see if this ends up being a larger Corsair composition in the space of this, and it ends up being uh, a uh, Corsair Zealot attack off the five Corsair. That's what it's starting to look like right this second, rather than the six gateway flood. We do have two Scourge along the corner for Tartman to potentially scout things in. He's got to go deep though, so he sees the two gateways, he's got the gateway count, takes the initial hit, but he critically does not, he's a nice job on Sugo's part to hide those Corsair count behind the cannon line. He saw the Stargate shimmering, but he doesn't have a really hard lock on how many Corsair there are. So this puts Tartman in a situation where he might not have the proper anti-air response. So getting some more Mutalisks out, but you really need uh, a pretty sizable Mutalisk force to deal with those Corsair once they're out on the field. So he's going for Mutalisk defense against potential Zealots on the ground. Zealots gonna have leg speed and plus one weapons in just a second. They're making their way out. But you also have the Corsair in a fleet of four, which should actually be sufficient to deal with this. So we only got a single Scourge to provide some support. You can see Tartman recognizing it immediately. Although Sugo's the one going ahead and backing off, clearing off that Scourge. I think he's still waiting for that Zelt leg speed before he's going to make, before he's going to make his way back out. Two additional uh, groupings of Scourge. I wonder if they're uh, Scourges? Scourges? It just sounds wrong. Six hatchery here at the six o'clock. So we're seeing Tartman go up to six hatch uh, style of play. And the Corsair is moving out. Unfortunately, not well bunched up there by Sugo and so feeling a little bit tender as far as uh feeling as far as his confidence level of making his way out I think he might also be concerned about additional mutalists and a potential backstab as far as a follow-up and he doesn't have that fifth Corsair that really makes you feel comfortable in the the overall package you should take down Scourge and whatnot out in the midfield so now we got a good amount of Scourge grouped up with the handful of mutalists we do have a Dark Templar out on the front as well to create some chaos and Tartman actually kind of getting away with a very uh, minuscule, able to also pick off a probe right there as it was trying to drop the Zealot foot. Does he spot the Dark Templar as it's making its way across? We, it looks like we have good Dark Templar coverage. Hydro Sten dropping, to, uh, transition back to six hatch, uh, to six hatch play, by the way. Dark Templar finding nothing there. Can reposition the six o'clock, the needles need to be there, which means they're gonna basically forego some map control, which is allowing Sugo to actually make a move out on the map. The Dark Templar ignoring the six o'clock location, making its way back out. And Tartman trying to make his way. He, he has some, I like the Zerglings out in the field, actually able to spot that army mid-map. This looks a, a bit much for Tartman to engage. So might want to back up, but just presenting that for Sugo essentially provides a little bit of uh, threat there for Tartman, where Tartman might want to think, okay, maybe I need to build a few more uh, units. Unfortunately, uh, the problem here for Sugo though is, is Tartman's at a great economy right now. He's got the 48 workers, 
He's got another drone making its way out. That is going to be potentially stopped by that Dark Templar. But Tartman's nearly in a position where he can just step on the gas and go flooding. Some Scourge making their way across, none of them landing. Some High Templar making their way out. And Sugo has a good amount of map control that should buy him a third, at least. But I'm waiting to see, once Tartman starts kicking on that gas pedal, whether he's going to go for more of a defensive... Uh, macro style where he's just sitting back forcing Sugo to come to him or if he's going to get aggressive he's positioning the mutal he, i'm not looking for the attack it's the hydros right now outside the natural expansion Sugo making his way to the six o'clock and tartman didn't have great eyes on that army as it made its way across right now it looks like he's sent the mules to go ahead and disrupt that third but he might want those mules in place to help deal with everything here at the six o'clock location so the corsairs and zealots making their way forward the zealots do not have movement speed so taking a good amount of hit the mules making their way in the scourge looks like two of them are going to land that's one corsair down but a brutality happening here at the six o'clock the high templar getting a lot of drone kills the mules completely wiped out and psy storm not just hitting the drones but hitting the hydros getting max value as they're trying to make their way in so a brilliant maneuver now all of a sudden where tartman might have been in a good position here in this match it has fallen apart with a really precision attack there by sugo and some beautiful micro as well. And that's kind of the, the hard part of the mutal style of place is just tracking the units, tracking the army and keeping it. And so now Tartman uh, in a situation where he's going to need to completely rebuild or he's going to have to make the decision as to whether he wants to go for an all-in counterattack. One thing is the Zerg does have the flexibility to go for a rebuild. The Corsairs remaining active out on the field. Still going to test that, that Overlord. It, man, it's life flash before its eyes. And the secondary frustration right now is, is this is a very active, a good amount of Corsairs, still five out in the field point. Not getting any Overlord kills, but wanting to test and check whether Tartman was going to redrone or not. So not only is he getting Overlord kills on top of this, the Dark Templar making his way in as well to try to clear the way. Able to get a drone kill, two drone kills, but really critically not just getting Overlord damage but also spotting whether Tartman was pulling the trigger to redrone or not. And I think he got a, a good indication that that was in fact a redrone from Tartman. So knows where he that he can go ahead and grab a third base. Honestly, he's in a situation where he might be able to grab yet another base on top of this. And he is making his way up to the upper right-hand corner with that probe to potentially do just that. The Corsairs mirroring the, the Hydralisk uh, movement to try to keep an eye on where they might be headed. Sugo has a sufficient attack force a little bit light on the worker count i wonder if i missed a backstab with the mutalisks or something along those lines i might have missed uh the mules really tearing in or he might have just waited to uh, a chart man in the red once again by the way look at this worker count 52 it's a little bit oversaturated for three bases but it looks like he is going to go ahead and position to grab that bottom right um, but right now suga in a really strong position he's got 30 supply lead he's got that third base secured He's got a good amount of map control. Missed that Overlord in the left-hand corner. Sugo didn't miss it, though. And this has kept Tartman in the red uh, for a considerable amount of time. Actually, maybe working a little bit to Tartman's benefit because he wanted to kind of pool those resources uh, to get an additional hatchery up anyway to stay relevant. Those earlier Overlords that were highly damaged getting wiped out. And Sugo doing a good job of keeping Tartman on his heels here. And making it very uncomfortable and it looks like he's going to be able to make his way to the bottom right to go ahead and scout out that third base as well which should trigger him i think to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock location that overlord i don't know that it's long for life so this is going to be so a longer macro play one thing for tartman though is because he has such a hefty drone count he can saturate this base pretty quickly and as long as he stays on top of his macro it looks like he's making his way to plus two weapons unfortunately this actually might be the big uh, exclamation point problem here for him is he does have so plus one weapons plus one armor opposite side and it's going to be a minute he's going to be behind as far as the overall upgrade battle so a, a bit of a challenge there doesn't have sufficient lurkers out in the field to really deal with sugo but if sugo takes a little bit too long he might have an opportunity to sail back in this with a couple really strong macro cycles right now making his hydro stop this is the thing that would help him do that is just moving some hydralist armies around the map he's got to keep them active and distracting though is try to cycle them around, threaten a backstab. Instead, it looks like Sugo's making his way across the map. Gonna go ahead and threaten and just attack bottom right. And it doesn't look like Tartman has enough as far as just raw tech units to engage this. And getting some beautiful engagements as Tartman, while getting his uh, Lurker's Psy Storm. Really, Sugo's just showing some fantastic map movement all over the place and able to wipe out the lurkers at, usually you want the yeah there's gg you usually want the hydros in front of the lurkers and instead got that army trapped which meant that was going to be a dead base bottom right 
and Sugo with just a massive supply lead had secured the fourth. That was it. And honestly, Sugo, I think the story of that match was just army maneuvering across that map. His army maneuvering was absolutely fantastic. So here, I'm gonna, this isn't me being serious. I'm just saying the word subscribe again. So when it goes to YouTube, it does the little shiny thing around the subscribe button. Not that I, because everybody's probably here subscribed anyway. But I just, I thought that was that's cute and whatever. I wonder how long that's gonna last. I wonder how much we can tax the YouTube system where it's like how many viewers at which point that actually, like Google's like, ah, oh, we're freaking out. They're hitting the little thingy a little bit too much. It's probably JavaScript thing anyway. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.